DNA replication. So in this video, we're going to talk about some of the more specific details of DNA replication that we didn't go into in the SL part of DNA replication. So we're going to talk about how uh, the DNA structure immediately suggests a mechanism for replication. We're going to talk about the enzymes that allow for replication. We're specifically going to talk about DNA polymerase and some details about how it works. And then we're going to talk about the difference between leading strand and a lagging strand. Okay, so that'll all make sense in just a couple seconds. So the first thing is that DNA structure suggested a mechanism for replication. Now, what this refers to is the fact that when Crick and Watson, those two famous scientists that first um, elucidated the structure of DNA using models, when they released their paper outlining the structure of DNA, they concluded their paper by saying that the, the structure of DNA immediately suggests a mechanism by which it replicates. So they suggested this idea of semi-conservative replication. Okay. Now at the time there was conflicting theories about how DNA replication um, actually happened and by them proposing this mechanism this wasn't immediately accepted but it was uh, proposed because of the structure of DNA okay so as we've already talked about DNA via its complementary base pairing principle which is what uh, Crick and Watson kind of discovered it allows for a DNA molecule to split in half and then act as templates for the next molecule, right? And that's this idea of semi-conservative replication. So it's just important to understand that DNA structure suggested a mechanism for DNA replication in that Crick and Watson kind of realized that that was probably how things were happening. So just to be aware of. Okay, let's get into the meat of it. How exactly does replication occur? There is um, seven different structures or seven different molecules you have to know about. Um, technically, only six of them are enzymes because we also have these single-stranded binding proteins, but mainly these are enzymes. So let's have a look at how this works. So it starts off with an enzyme known as DNA gyrase, okay? And DNA gyrase has the function, so let's write that out, DNA gyrase. DNA has a function of relieving tension on the DNA strand. Now, what does this mean? In the previous videos, we discussed how when a DNA is supercoiled, right, it means that it's basically twisted around itself, right? Now, if you had a rubber band and you were to hold it on both ends and then kind of twist it in opposite directions, you would produce a pattern that looks probably something like this, right? And then imagine that you then wanted to separate these two rubber bands from each other. Well, that wouldn't be very easy unless you kind of relieve this tension, this twisting tension that there is, right? So what you'd want to do is basically rotate or you want to twist the rubber band in the direction that it wants to turn. Okay, so maybe take out a rubber band and try to figure out what I mean by that. So you want to, there's this tension, this torsion tension that you need to relieve before you can separate the two strands from each other. And DNA gyrase is the enzyme that does this. So it, it kind of binds to the DNA molecule and then twists it, it uncoils it. Let's put it like that. It uncoils the DNA strand, okay? Why does it do this? It does this so that this next enzyme, namely helicase, I'm just going to underline it just to, so I don't have to write out the enzyme names all the time. What DNA helicase does is that it will bind to the DNA strand just behind DNA gyrase and it will split it. It will break the hydrogen bonds, right, uh, which hold the strand together and it will then separate it into two strands. One which we call the leading strand and one which we call the lagging strand. Okay, now we're going to talk about why they're called leading and lagging in a couple of seconds. Um, but for now, just appreciate that there's leading and lagging strands. So you separate the DNA molecules. Now, indirectly, what you're doing is that you're exposing these nucleotides, right? So just imagine each of these lines is a, a nucleotide that now has its base kind of pointing outwards, okay? The next thing that's going to happen is that you're going to have these single-stranded binding proteins they're kind of floating around in the nucleus. Remember, this is all happening in the nucleus in interphase, S phase of interphase. These single-stranded binding proteins will bind to the nucleotides, okay? They're going to bind to them. Now, why do they do this? Well, you want to make sure that these nucleotides don't get damaged at all in the replication process, right? Because if you have damaged DNA, you can imagine how many problems that creates. And when the DNA or when the nucleotides aren't 
doing hydrogen bonds to each other, they're susceptible to chemical damage, okay? So what single-stranded binding proteins do is that, first of all, that they prevent, they kind of alleviate danger, right? So they remove, um, well, let's put it like this, they stabilize the nucleotides. So they prevent it from reacting with loads of things. And then it also prevents the nucleotides from coming back together again, okay? So it, um, it holds nucleotides apart, okay? So you've separated the DNA strands and you have these single-stranded binding proteins that bind to it. The next enzyme that's gonna do something is an enzyme called DNA primase, okay? And what DNA primase does is that it in fact attaches RNA primers to, actually, no, we're going to have to change the color now. So we're going to make this, this color here. So DNA primase will attach RNA nucleotides, so RNA nucleotides, to a certain region of the strand, okay? Okay, so DNA primase adds RNA primers. Okay, now why does it do this? Well, eventually what we want to do is that we want to let a polymerase enzyme bind to this DNA molecule and then start synthesizing or adding DNA nucleotides, right? So DNA nucleotides is going to look like this. And the way, the only way that DNA polymerase 3, right? So the DNA polymerase 3 is what the enzyme that adds DNA nucleotides, it can only bind to a double-stranded region. Okay, that's important. That it can, DNA polymerase 3 can only bind to a double-stranded region. And therefore, you have to first attach a primer so that you have a double-stranded region that DNA polymerase 3 can bind to. Then, after the, the primase has done its thing, right? Let's, we forgot to draw in the primase. So we'll draw primase in over here. DNA polymerase 3 is going to bind to that primer region, the double-stranded region. So we'll underline DNA polymerase 3. And what it will do is that it will move along the strand in a 5' prime to 3' prime direction and add new nucleotides. Now, it is very important that this happens in a 5' prime to 3' prime direction, okay? So what that means is that this is the 5' prime end of the new strand that we formed, and therefore, on this, this the leading strand, this end must be the three prime end, right? Because we have anti-parallel strands always. So DNA polymerase three adds nucleotides going from five prime to three prime. And it just takes these nucleotides that are floating around the nucleus. Perfect, okay. So then we have these DNA polymerase three and that's kind of working in, in an open direction, right? And these single-stranded binding proteins are gonna get replaced by them, just in case you were wondering. So they're gonna get replaced by these new nucleotides. And then we're almost done with synthesizing or with replicating this DNA strand, right? The only thing we have to do is that we have to replace this RNA primer with DNA nucleotides, right? Because in our finished DNA uh, strand, we don't want any RNA in there. And the way that we do this is using an enzyme called DNA polymerase 1. So which color should we choose? Let's say purple, okay? So DNA polymerase 1, okay, DNA polymerase 1, is going to come into this primer region and it's going to replace RNA nucleotides with DNA nucleotides, okay? So we can replace it in this way, like that, okay? So it's replacing them, okay? Then we're almost done. We almost have a complete strand. The only thing we have to do is then seal the nick or the connection between the nucleotides that we've just added with DNA polymerase one and the, and the original strand, right? The replicated strand that we formed over here. So what we need to do is we need to form that sugar phosphate link between these two nucleotides. So I'm kind of, it's kind of being hidden by this polymerase three, but you can imagine behind there, there's a nucleotide and those two, these two nucleotides don't have a phosphate, uh, di phosphodiester bond between them. And the way that we do this is with, by using DNA ligase. So ligase, we're going to make this other blue color. And what it's going to do is that it's going to bind over here. I know this is becoming quite messy now. I hope that you can follow me by the narrative. Um, so DNA ligase is going to seal the nicks. Okay. So it, it connects nucleotides.
Yeah. All right. So those are all of the enzymes. Now I said earlier that I would talk about why we have this leading strand and this lagging strand, and we're going to get to it. So remember that all DNA strands, when the two strands are, are bonded together by hydrogen bonding, the strands run in anti-parallel, right? Which means that if this is the three prime end on the, the template strand, right, the, the original parent strand, then on the other template strand, this is going to be the five prime end, right? The five prime end. And on the lagging strand, we have the exact same process happening as we did on the leading strand, right? So we're going to have um, DNA primase is going to attach uh, a primer, right? So let's draw that in there. DNA primase will attach a primer and then DNA polymerase three will come along and it's then going to synthesize, um, it's going to produce a new nucleotide, right? But remember, DNA polymerases only work from five prime to three prime. And so if this is the three prime end on this strand, well, then the five prime end on the, on the complementary strand is going to be up here, right? So the DNA polymerase three can only work in this direction. So basically in the opposite direction to where the, the DNA polymerase three in the previous uh, strand was working, okay? DNA polymerase three was working in this direction, in this strand, but in this direction on the other. Now, why does this lead to a lagging and a leading strand? Well, on the leading strand, DNA polymerase 3 can work towards the replication fork, towards this opening, right? As helicase exposes more nucleotides, that's fine. DNA polymerase 3 is just going to move a little bit closer. And so it's probably going to sit right behind helicase most of the time, right? Meaning that it quickly synthesizes a new strand. But on the other strand... DNA polymerase 3 is working in this direction, which means that every time you've exposed a couple of more nucleotides with helicase, well, then DNA pr uh, primase is then again going to have to bind, and then you're going to kind of form a strand, right? So if we just, let's just clear this up a little bit. Okay, so on the leading strand, we're synthesizing nucleotides in this direction, right? And we only had one primer. On the lagging strand, however, we form this primer, and the the Polymerases are going to work in this direction, but then once the strand is opened a little bit more, well, then you have to attach a new primer, right? And then you're going to have to keep adding nucleotides in this direction, okay? And then the strand is going to open up some more and some more and some more, and so you continuously have to add new primers and do DNA polymerase 3 has to work again and again and again. Now, what this is going to form is these little sections of DNA that's been replicated, okay? Little segments. And we call this Okasaki fragments, Okasaki fragments. So the process of DNA replication is the same on the leading and on the lagging strand. It's just that it's continuous on the leading strand, whereas it's lagging on the lagging strand. Okay, so that's kind of what you have to know for the, for this um, for the HL component. Just remember that you have all these enzymes and that DNA polymerases work in five prime to three prime. So what are the key points to take from this video? The first is that Crick and Watson proposed a mechanism for replication based on the DNA structure and how you had this template. The second was that DNA replication involves six enzymes and then those single stranded binding proteins. And then that there was that replication has to happen in opposite directions on the leading and on the lagging strand. So I hope that made sense.